Hi you guys, it's me and Bertie. Um, today's video is just something really fun. My grandparents did Bible study with me and I thought that was so special. And I always think about my video I have on this channel if you haven't, like with my cousin Khalil who passed. And it's just always nice to have my family on the channel because you just never know what's gonna happen in life and they're older and I wanna just, it's just so loving and just, you know, bring you guys in my life. And they know I took the video and everything. I asked, you can hear me ask them if they wanna be in it. So um, enjoy. I do Bible study every Monday. It's on Facebook, the link's down below. Um, we're in week 29, you know, hate when that happens. We're in week 29, isn't that wild? So yeah. A lot of the girls, they watch it throughout the week. Okay. Because we're all in different time zones. Okay. Okay. So, so, so everyone may not be in here right now, but they watch it later. Okay. So, hi. Welcome to Bible study. We have a lot of friends here today. Does here you stay for Bible study? <laughs> she doesn't want to uh, come to Bible study. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's going to take off. Maybe next time we'll do it. In the mañana, in the mañana, thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Okay. Do you want to be in Bible study, Grandpa? Yeah, I'll be here. Okay. Okay, you want to move to the show? No, no, no. I can move this. Okay. 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 Ok
Panina had children, but Hannah was childless. This would go up from this his town every year to worship. This man would go from his town every year to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of Armies at Shiloh, where Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phineas, were the Lord's priests. Whenever, whenever Elkanah offered a sacrifice, he always gave portions of his meat to his wife, Benina, and to each of their sons and daughters. But he gave double portion to Hannah, for he loved her, even though the Lord had kept her from conceiving. Her rival would taunt her severely just to provoke her, because the Lord had kept Hannah from conceiving. Year after year, when she went up to the Lord's house, her rival taunted her in this way. Hannah would weep and would not eat. Hannah, why are you crying? Her husband Elkanah would ask. Why won't you eat? Why are you troubled? Am I not better to you than ten sons? On one occasion, Hannah got up after they ate and drank at Shiloh. The priest Eli was sitting on the chair by the doorstep of the Lord's temple. Deeply hurt, Hannah prayed to the Lord and wept with many tears. Making a vow, she pleaded, Lord of armies, if you will take notice of your servant's affliction, remember and not forgive me, forget me and give your servant a son. I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and his hair will never be cut. While she continued praying in the Lord's presence, Eli watched her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, and through her lips were moving, her voice could not be heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to be drunk? Get rid of your wine. No, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman with a broken heart. I haven't had any wine or beer. I, ha I have been pouring out my heart before the Lord. Don't think of me as a wicked woman. I've been praying from the depth of my anguish and resentment. Eli responded, Go in peace and may the Lord or may the God of Israel grant the request you've made of him. May your servant find favor with you, she replied. Then Hannah went on her way. She ate and no longer looked despondent. Samuel's birth and dedication. The next morning, Elkanah and Hannah got up early to worship before the Lord. Afterward, they returned home to Ramah. Then Elkanah was in, intimate with his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. After some time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel because she said, I requested him from the Lord. When Elkanah and all his household went up to make the annual sacrifice and his vow offering to the Lord, Hannah did not go and explained to her husband, after the child is weaned, I'll take him to appear in the Lord's presence and to stay there permanently. Her husband Elkanah replied, do what you think is best and stay here until you've weaned him. May the Lord confirm your word. So Hannah stayed there and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him with her to Shiloh, as well as three-year-old bull, half a bushel of flour, and a clay jar of wine. Though the boy was still young, she took him to the Lord's house at Shiloh. Then they slaughtered the bull and brought the boy to Eli. Please, my Lord, she says, as surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this boy, and since the Lord gave me what I asked for, I now give the boy to the Lord. For as long as he lives, he is given to the Lord. Then he worshiped the Lord's there. But those who are starving hunger no more. The woman who is childless gives birth to seven, but the woman with many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and gives life. He sends down to Sheol and he raises others up. The Lord brings poverty and gives wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the trash heap. He seats them with noblemen and gives them a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. He has set the world on them. He guards the steps of his faithful ones, but the wicked perish in darkness, for a person does not prevail by his own strength. For those who oppose the Lord will be shattered. He will thunder in the heavens against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give power to his king. He will lift up the horn of his anointed. Elkanah went home to Ramah, but the boys served the Lord in the presence of the priest Eli. And that's it. That's okay. it for today. Okay. So my Bible actually offers like little excerpt, like a like a summary of kind of what we just read. So I'm gonna read that for you guys. Okay. Okay. So this is like kind of like from the person helping us read through the Bible. So bow and worship. I bow and worship every mor morning when I wake up, but sometimes I bow to the wrong thing. I slap the alarm notification on my phone for the third time silently and sleepy sleepily vowing to get out of bed earlier than the night before. Then I put the phone down and I get up. But first I do a quick scan through the, un through the usual suspects, 
email, text, social media. It only takes a minute. I think to myself, as one minute becomes many, before stepping out of bed, I've set my heart and mind on the world's feet, consuming whatever it is, whatever it happens to send my way at 6.05 a.m. Maybe it's my per penchant for distraction that makes my heart so drawn to Hannah's faithfulness. Scripture describes her praying again and again to the Lord, pouring out her heart, bowing in worship to God. I'm sure she wasn't perfect, but oh, how she prayed. Hannah's prayers were not obligatory half-hearted or empty. She prayed honestly and openly. She prayed as if her life depended on it. Deeply hurt, Hannah prayed to the Lord and wept with many tears. We read in 1 Samuel 1, 10. I've been praying from the depth of my anguish and resentment, she said. The good, the bad, and the painful, Hannah brought it all to God as an act of worship. What was it about Hannah that created in her the worshiping heart I longed to have? Why was Hannah's why was prayer Hannah's first resort instead of her last? The Bible doesn't tell us outright, but we're given some solid clues. She believed in God's power. Hannah approached God with reverence, asking boldly for his blessing. She trusted in God's goodness. Hannah offered her beloved son Samuel as God's servant before he was even conceived. What trusting resolve? She rested in God's presence. We get a glimpse of how Hannah responded in sorrow and even how she began her day in the midst of hard times of waiting. Hannah's habit of prayer was less about her goodness and more about God's greatness. After Samuel's birth, Hannah carried her son up to the tabernacle, dedicating him to the Lord. It's here that we see her back where she started in 1 Samuel 1, presenting her whole self in prayer before God. Though her prayers of anguish had become a song of thanksgiving, Hannah's posture was still the same. In supplication and in praise, she bowed in worship before the Lord. We serve a powerful, loving, and good God, the God who is like no other. May we give our worship glances and prayerful pleas to him and him alone. When our lives ache with need, may we bring them to the throne. When our hearts break, may we pour them out to God. May we rise in the morning, may we rise in worship. What did you get out of that? Okay, um, let me tell you something about this Bible. Okay. As you were reading, I was following you, but the, the words in this Bible is a lot. Not the same in the Bible, okay. but it contains the same thing. Mm -hmm. So why is that? Oh, because they're like different versions of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But that's sometimes good because the wording I may have, um, sometimes your wording in your Bible may bring a different context to the yeah. story. Like sometimes it may, be, like we may be able to see it from a different light. So that's good. Okay. It's good. Yeah, because it's the same thing over here, but in, like in different words. Yeah. And sometimes, like, especially when you go to church, like, they'll tell you what version of the Bible they're reading from. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So you read about that. So Hannah, good hands. She didn't have no kids. And then God bless her. Well, she, she, she said, God, if I have this son, like, he will be yours. Yeah. And that's exactly, and then she followed through with it. And what happened to Samuel? Well, we're going to find out. Okay. So what we know so far is that Samuel was born, and then she did dedicate him, and then he lived under the priesthood of who? of Eli. So that's what we know so far. And then, so what happens throughout the week is I post what you read next, mm -hmm. and then you read Monday through Friday, or as long as you read five days a week, and then next Monday so we'll talk many, about it. how many verses were today? Like how many verses did we read? Uh, one and a half. One and a half, mm -hmm. okay. And now we close out in prayer. Okay. Okay. God, thank you again for another good reading. Thank you for just showing us um, Hannah's resilient worship and just boldly and unapologetically her being able to come before you with her bold prayers and you answering them. God, when you put something in our heart, it's not by accident. When we have desires, it's not by accident. You know the desires of our heart and in some way we believe that you put them there. We ask that this week we're just bolder in our prayers, that things we don't think we can pray for that we do, that we just remain faithful and just continuing to show unlimited faith and just saying, hey, you know what, God, like, I know I may not even deserve this or I may not want this or I, I can't have this, but God, I'm praying for this. And I ask that you just show me how to achieve it because you put it in my heart. So God, this week, I just ask, I just ask that you just cover everyone in our path, that you just send your white light over us, continue to send angels to guide us heal broken hearts, mend broken relationships, and just bring us back to you and your word because when you speak to us, it's not by accident. God, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for family during Bible study. Thank you for all of us being here today. And please just cover us, our hearts, our personal 
finances, things that we're going through, family members, just continue to cover us and um, let us show up in our own lives for you and for your purpose. We love you, we thank you, we praise you. Amen. Amen. Okay, and that's yes. it. That's it. That's it. Good study. It's good study. It's fun. And yeah. it's and, it, and I like that it breaks it up for the week, so it makes it easy. Yeah. All right, y'all. So uh, do we do it tomorrow or this week? You want to do it with me this week? Yeah. Yes. So look, let me show you what happens. So this is only once a week. Okay. And then through the rest of the week, like you see here, now tomorrow we'll read 1 Samuel 2, 12 through 36. Okay. So we read this one and then tomorrow we got And then, so I do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh. Okay. And then I don't read on the weekend, so then I go to church Sunday. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 That's it. That's it for today. Bye <laughs> <Good> tonight. <laughs>